We've seen in the last two lectures a lot, uh, uh, many of the basic definitions of uh, properties of matroids, the defining properties, but also uh, definitions of things like circuit, loop, uh, span, rank. And then in the last lecture, we uh, studied the, the greedy algorithm and learned that it uh, is optimal uh, in terms of finding a maximum weight base. We're going to look in this lecture a little bit more carefully at the rank function and some of its properties, and in particular, show the link between the rank function and submodular functions, showing that the rank function is a, is a submodular function. So let's remember uh, from the first lecture what the rank function is and define it a little bit more carefully. So let's, uh, let's let M be a matroid. Let M with base set uh, E and independent set uh, independent system script I be a matroid. And uh, recall from the first lecture on matroids that for any subset U of the base set, the rank of U is equal to the cardinality of a base of U. And this was well defined because we showed in the first lecture uh, that all bases have the same cardinality and that follows from the extension property. So the rank of U is equal to the size of a base of U. And again, in short, this is well defined because of the extension property. Of the independent uh, independent system, and let's uh, also remember a little bit more carefully what uh, span means. So I can define the span of a subset U to be all of those elements of E such that they don't enlarge the rank. In other words, the rank of U plus I is equal to the rank of u. And so from this immediately we have the following uh, several properties. First, for any subset u of e, a base of u is a base of the span of u. So if something is a base of u, then the span of that does not require a larger base. Again, one uh, if, if you're new to matroids, perhaps thinking about linear algebra is, is, is one easy way to verify these claims for a specific kind of matroid. This is asserting that, 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 they're, that, they're, generally, that they're generally true. Um, for any u, that's a subset of, of e, B is and B is a base of U, then I is an element of uh, of the span um, of U if and only if B plus I is not an element of i. Sorry, let me let me I made a few mistakes here. So let's take a subset u of a subset of e and let's let b be a base of u. Then i is an element of uh, the span of s if and only if b plus i is not an independent set. And if I have any two subsets that are nested t1 and t2 then uh, this, this nesting is uh, preserved by the span. So in other words, the span of T1 is a subset of the span of T2. These are, again, uh, rather, uh, rather straight, uh, straightforward. 
So now let's go back to the rank function and see what uh, see what it, what properties it has to satisfy, and we're going to see another characterization of of the rank function. So the rank function satisfies the following. First, for uh, any t1, that's a subset of t2, the rank of t1 is less than or equal to the rank of t2. In other words, the rank satisfies a monotonicity property. Rank of t1 is less than or equal to the rank of t2. I'll name this monotonicity. And the other important property is that for any t1 and t2, if I take an element that is in neither t1 or t2, in other words, if I take some element of E but not in the larger set t2, then we have a property of uh, diminishing returns, or we could call it a non-increasing marginal value. So we have a property that the rank of t2 plus i, so I've added i as an element that's in, not in t2, so t2 plus i is something more, compared to the rank of t2. In other words, the increase in rank of t2 when I add element i is always less than or equal to the increase in rank of t1. So this is called... Um, non-increasing marginal value because I'm looking at the marginal value of i if I already have t2 um, or you might think of it as uh, diminishing returns the value if rank is my value function of adding an element i is less if I have if I have a bigger subset so let's um, let's check let's check these uh, let's check these properties that these properties hold. Um, so the, so we know that a base of t one is an independent set subset of t two. This is this is true. Uh, so this means that the the first property. is immediate. Again, the first property is saying that the rank of T1, what's the rank of T1? It is the size of the largest base of T1. But the size, but, but, but uh, that independent set, the largest independent subset of T1, a base of T1, is an independent subset of T2. So potentially the, the largest independent subset of T2 will be even bigger, but it will certainly not be smaller. So, so the first, this first property is, is immediate. Now for the uh, second property, we know that the rank of T1 plus I minus the rank of T1, this can be, can take two values, either one or zero. It's one if I is not in the span of T1, and it's zero if I is in the span of T1. And here is where we use a property from the previous slide that uh, the span of T1 is a subset of the span of T2. So in other words, the span of T1 is a subset of the span of T2. So what does this tell us? This tells us that if you look at this right-hand side here, it's more likely for uh, it to be zero as we have a, if, if we replace t1 by t2 on the right, because it's more likely for i to be in a superset of span of t1 than it is to be in span of t1. t1. Okay, so these are two impro important uh, properties of rank and you'll recognize that these are extremely related to this concept of submodularity. If you haven't seen submodularity, we're about to define this. 
We're going to start a little more generally now, not talking about a matroid, but maintaining this concept of the uh, ground set, E. Um, and I'm going to look at now all functions, F, from subsets of E to R. You'll notice that the rank function is exactly such a subset. It takes such a such a function. It takes it takes a it takes a subset and it returns uh, the cardinality of its largest independent subset. So a function is called submodular if it satisfies the following uh, the following property. If for any subsets A and B of E, F of A intersect B plus F of A union B is less than or equal to F of A plus F of B. And uh, Here's uh, an important, an important uh, equivalent characterization. A function f from 2 to the e to r is submodular if it has this non-increasing marginal value property. So in other words, this is an equivalent characterization. Um, it's submodular if and only if it has non-increasing marginal values. In other words, it has this property that the rank function uh, that the that the rank function has. So let me just let me just write it down. It means that R of T two plus I minus r of t2 is less than or equal to r of t1 plus i my oops i don't mean r um, we're talking about it more generally here so this is these are all f's f of t1 uh, t2 plus i minus f of t2 is less than f of t1 plus i minus f of t1 whenever t1 is a subset of uh, t2 so let's uh, let's let's prove this. Um, so one direction is immediate of this if and only if, and you can see that this non-increasing marginal values is really just one of the possible assignments of of of, of a and b. So indeed, if if f is submodular. Then uh, just take um, if it's a modular and for any T1 subset T2 and for any I that's not in T2, just take A equal to T1 plus I, take B equal to T, and then uh, what does submodularity read? Um, what is this? What does this condition here read? It says that f of t uh, 2 plus i plus f of um, f of t1. This is equal to f of a union b because remember t2 is a superset of t1 plus f of a intersection b. This is just my by definition, but my choice of a and b. And so the intersection of a and b, whoops, sorry, b is t2 here. The intersection of a and b is just, is just t1. But now I use submodularity, so this is less than or equal to, by submodularity, f of a plus f of b. And f of a is equal to f of t1 plus i and f of b is f of t2 and if i just rearrange this inequality i have on the left 
f of t2 plus i minus f of t2, and on the right, f of t1 plus i minus f of t1. So this proves one direction. So now let's, let's prove uh, the, other, the other direction. So for the other direction, Uh, consider any A and B subset of uh, E. So if uh, B is a subset of A, then what we want to prove, uh, the submodularity definition follows immediately. What I mean by follows is again the submodularity definition follows, um, but suppose not. Suppose then that instead uh, B is not a subset of A, which means that if I subtract B from A, note that there's no there's no nesting here. This has some elements, B1 to BK for some K that's at least one. So then you can see that f of a union b minus f of a, I'm going to write a telescoping sum. This is equal to the sum from i equals 1 to k of f of a plus b1 all the way up to bi minus f of a plus b1 all the way up to bi minus 1. So this is, I've just written a telescoping sum, so there's nothing magical here that's happened. But now I'm going to use uh, submodularity. I'm sorry, now I'm going to use this, uh, the, this, this, this non-increasing uh, marginals. To bound this, right, we want to conclude the submodularity property. To conclude that uh, this is less than or equal to f of a intersect b plus b1 all the way up to bi minus f of a intersect b plus b1 all the way up to b i minus 1. And again, now by telescoping, this is equal to f of b minus f of a intersect b. I've used telescoping sums twice. And rearranging, this is exactly the uh, submodularity property. So this, uh, so this concludes um, this concludes this, uh, this, uh, the proof. Okay, so the last thing we're going to do in this lecture is uh, assert that uh, the connection between rank functions and submodularity, which, which at this point won't be, won't be uh, surprising. And it says the following. That R from 2 to the E, and I'm calling it R to, to suggest a rank function, is the rank function of some matroid M on the same ground set, of course. So the task here is to find what, what I is. Uh, if and only if, first, R of the empty set equals zero. R can only have increments of size one. In other words, R of S plus I minus R of S has to be either zero or one. There's no such restriction on I. And R is submodular. I'm going to leave the details of the proof uh, for an exercise and just give the key idea. So the proof idea, in other words, I'll tell you what the matroid is. Um, to show we need to find the matroid M. And we're going to let I be all subsets A such that the rank of A is equal to the cardinality. All subsets. So now what remains is to check that um, indeed this is a matroid and its rank function 
is R. So I'll leave that uh, as an exercise and we will stop, uh, we'll stop the lecture there.